Hello and welcome to the Fen Den. I'm your host, Sean Allen Fen, and my goal is to win your hearts and to change your hey, minds. Hey, welcome to the Fen Den. This is your host, Sean Allen Fen. You know what my goal is. It's to win your hearts. And if I can change your mind, I will. Because I realized that once your mind is made up, it's made up. And it sometimes can take a lot of convincing before it ever changes. Now that's true for everyone because once you have a particular view of the world and you tend to reinforce your view of the world by the things that you see and the way you interpret the world because your interpretation of the world reinforces your belief of the way things are already so that your belief is confirmed, which is why it's so pointless to argue with people. When talking to people and you need to get something accomplished, it's really easy if you see one thing, if you see it one way and they see it another way, it's really easy to get trapped in in re-emphasizing your opinions, re-emphasizing whatever you believe, you know, whatever your perception is, you'll you'll tend to do anything to reinforce it, regardless of the other person's reality. At least at first. Well, it, it reminds me of um, I went, I had to get a watch battery because one of the things that I've looked at to improve myself, and if you're like me, you're always looking for ways to improve yourself, and that is uh, true for everyone who is part of our growing community of like-minded go-getters, the Go-Getters Galaxy. If you want to join our private Facebook group, you can just ask me. Just ask. So if you're like me, which you probably are because you're listening, or, you know, maybe you're not and you want to you wanna see kind of what, if I know what I'm talking about, and, and you can, and that's fine if that's a good, if that's a reason why you're listening to know whether or not what I'm saying makes any sense, or even if it's to criticize, then at least that's a reason to listen. But it's more likely that you're listening because there's something about what I'm saying that resonates with you. So I decided that I have to make it a point to control time better. Because one, not one of, the most valuable thing that we have is time. Do you agree? Because time can never be returned. You can always get more money, but you can never take time and get a refund on it. You you once you once it's gone, it's gone. You're never getting it back. It's the most precious thing because because it has scarcity and not only does it have scarcity or, or is it on the one hand for the universe there's no scarcity but for us we're allotted a certain amount of time in our lives and the reason why it does seem like people who sell time are the ones who are losing or the people who rent time are losing and the ones who buy time are the winners because if you're buying time you're buying the most valuable thing that exists which means you are wealthy now in an effort to control my time so that I can not rent it out but I could actually buy it I just have been kind of just I guess noticing 
that this is a area that has to improve. And one of those things that will change everything. Okay. Because I believe that sometimes you can accept your weaknesses and if you spend too much time trying to strengthen your weaknesses, you're just going to have strong weaknesses. But there are some things that you actually need to, that you can take care of easily just by making conscious effort. And one of those things is controlling time. So I say all of that to say that uh, I was cleaning through some things and discovered an old watch. And this watch that, it's not, not a fancy watch, but it's a good watch. And I remembered, I totally forgot about it until I found it and remembered why I got it years ago. And it's because I decided that I need to control my time more effectively. And the physical nature of having a physical object that's specifically made to tell time because you could always check the time by looking at your phone. Or maybe you have a compass. Maybe you have a sundial, I mean. And what good is a sundial if it's in the shade, right? So what good is what good what good are your tools unless you're unless you're using them in there out? So I say all of that to say <laughs> that I got the uh, I found this watch and I went and got, had to get a battery and I went to a Rite Aid and found their batteries and they were all under lock and key so no one steals them and so I finally got uh, a man to help me get the battery and he was a really really nice guy i think he was probably the manager and he really tried diligently to get me the right battery for this watch and we looked and looked and he couldn't find it and then finally the watch that i have is one that um has the the battery is accessible through you have to open up unlock the the little chamber that it's in and it seemed impossible to get out and see what, what kind of battery it was. But in order to do that, we had to open this little ba the back of this watch, and we needed a tool. And the guy was really nice. But listen, no matter where you work and what you do, regardless of how much money you make, it's that service that will be remembered. And you know what? If I ever have to go to Rite Aid... Now, I'm saying this because I, I didn't end up buying the battery, because here's why. I would have if I could have, but... Because that guy, the manager, gave me such good service, and he went out of his way to help me for a little tiny battery... I will go out of my way to go to that Rite Aid. There's a Rite Aid right across the street from where I live. But no one who works there gives the service this guy gives. So I will go to the one far farther away just because the manager there is really attentive. And I appreciate that. But he was so attentive that he... He decided that I needed a screwdriver to open this watch. And so he went to look for a screwdriver. And so he went in the back and he was waiting. I was just waiting for him. And he finally came back and he couldn't find one. He didn't have it. So he had given me such a good attention up until that time that I decided, well, okay. I guess I will leave with nothing accomplished. But then all of a sudden there was a man there. He was standing right in front of me, and the manager knew him, and he was a big, burly guy, and he had alcohol in his breath, but he was just an old guy who happened to have 
a tool with him. He, used, he happened to have this, like a big, kind of like a Swiss Army knife, but basically this portable t tool, where he finally, he was, I think he was a little drunk, but he was a nice guy and he helped me out. He finally came out with the little screwdriver and opened the watch. Now, the point of that story is twofold. Number one, because I made a decision where I, there was something I needed to improve, I came across a watch, knew I needed a watch, I just, I, I'm just going to start wearing a watch so I can keep track of time better. And then that led me to re realize that there are good people in the world who want to help you and the universe is in your favor. This this guy went out of his way. And there was and then the man with the screwdriver, he helped me out. So I didn't buy the battery because when we found out what kind it needed, what kind the watch needed, they didn't have that kind. But I will go back to that Rite Aid. If ever I need something from Rite Aid, I know. What's the big deal? Well, because it's the attentiveness and the service that matters. Now, I had to go and look for... Okay, so after dealing with this, this guy, who was really great, you know, he... Uh, English was not his first language, and Spanish is not my first language. And so, there, regardless of the little, you know, language barrier talking to him, he was awesome. You know, he, so I say that because I dealt with someone really great in that moment. And now I still have to go find a battery. And so I go to the next door down the street. They don't have a battery. And so I keep going to see, okay, well, there's got to be a watch battery on the street somewhere. And so I come into this um, so I find this jewelry repair place that has watches and sells watches. And so, of course, they probably have a watch battery. And I go in and... Now, here's why I bring this up. Because of my interaction with the lady at the counter at this jewelry place. She... Uh, she's a lady in the back of this little jewelry place that... While she was very helpful, she was just funny because the the conversation, I could tell that she had, her, her view of the world was different from, from the man who I just interacted with at the Rite Aid. And I could tell that right away because she, uh, when I asked for a battery and as if she had the watch batteries. She began to explain to me, well, we have batteries and but first I have to make sure it's not the battery, but it's the make sure it's the watch. You know, make I mean make sure that the battery it, it is the problem and not the watch. Anyway, she communicated that she is very important to run this little battery through this through her little tester. And the way she was saying it was, she was saying it as if she thought, oh, I don't know what she thought, but I just came in because I knew I needed a battery. And the store didn't have it, and I was hoping she would have it. So, And I told her what kind of battery I needed, because I found out from the nice man at, at the Rite Aid, I discovered what exactly what battery I needed. But... When I tried to explain to the lady at the jewelry repair place, she wouldn't even listen. I tried to explain, okay, I know, I know what kind of battery it is. And, and for some reason, like, she didn't hear me or I didn't, I wasn't clear enough. You know, when you, when you interact with some people, you just kind of have to, I don't know. You enter their world and 
you, you want to get the best the best out of them. She was kind of argumentative, argumentative personality. Like, you know, I first of all, I just wanted to let her do whatever she needed to do to do her job. I wasn't there to tell her how to do her job. But she went through this huge process of like trying to explain to me about make sure it's the battery to find out what kind of battery and I'm like okay I just told you what the battery is and anyway um it w it wasn't bad it was just that she she was just kind of argumentative she's like and, and then correcting me when when I said that yeah I, I know it's just the battery she's like well you 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 acted like I told you this, and you said, uh, and, and you acted like you didn't know, and I don't, I can't remember exactly what you said. And it doesn't matter. It's just the feeling that you have with people, isn't it? I mean, very seldom can you remember exactly what they said. But all I know is it's just kind of like this argumentative kind of attitude. And, and, the, and then the, the reason why I won't ever go back to this lady isn't that she was she's not a bad person it's, it's there's there's really uh there's really only one reason and that's that when I paid for the battery she said it's going to be $9 okay so I had to I had to get some cash anyway to pay her. So I'd go and get some cash and come back. And she told me that she couldn't do it. She had to send my watch for someone else to do it. Uh, I didn't understand why, but anyway. So I came back, and my watch was not there. And she was explaining to me, oh, well, I had to, it's not back yet. I'm like, well, where is it? And then she, and then is that Instead of like telling me just kind of straight up like <laughs> exactly where it is, she's like, well, well, he and I don't know who she's talking about. He's sick and so he's not here. I'm like, I, I was I could have asked, asked like, what are you talking? Who who are you talking about? But I didn't care. I just wanted my watch. But she was telling me about someone was sick and then they weren't there, and so it was just kind of confusing. I mean, you you would expect that the just fixing a battery, a watch battery, would be just quick and easy. And it, it's cool, but why I won't return to that little jewelry place again, that little watch repair shop, is when I paid for it. She said, "You've been here before, right?" And I said, "No, I, actually, this is my first time." Oh, well, I should have charged you 10. <laughs> yeah, and so I, I was like, okay, well, thank you. <laughs> She's like, I don't know what her reasoning was. I think she was trying to say that she charges her regular customers a dollar less than new customers. I don't I don't fully understand why and I don't know why she would even tell me that but needless to say I got the battery for my watch so my watch so I wore my watch and I feel good because now I'm on time all, all of a sudden now I'm on time everywhere okay so I'm feeling really proud of myself now I'm on time everywhere but just when I was feeling so proud of myself because now I can be on time everywhere and went through the ordeal of getting this, finding this watch in the first place and going and getting this battery, fantastic. I have a watch. Now this is great. I can wear it and I can be on time. When all of a sudden I sleep with it on, and wake up, and the band completely broke. The little 
pieces in between the little metal gla- latches that deteriorated because I guess the thing was that old. Anyway, the the watch now is virtually useless except for now it works, but I just can't wear it. Okay, so next thing is I have to get a new watch band. However, mission accomplished for getting the watch fixed. While it has helped me to be on time, I have to keep it on for... I, it's it's hard for me to keep it on because it doesn't have the watch band now. So I have to get the watch band. But you never know. You'll fix one thing and then another thing breaks. That's my point. Okay? So if I can change your mind, I will. I'll change your mind and then something else will come along. And, and, it'll, and everything will completely be... Every thing will be shifted because that's the way it is everything breaks down everything breaks down so then what is the point well before you start to get into that kind of mode about what's the point of it all I'll tell you what the point is That is the point. Our job is to make order out of chaos. How do you make order out of chaos, though? Well, that's a good question. How do you make order out of chaos? I have a couple things I want to talk about in this episode of The Fend In. Number one... I mentioned the book that I'm writing, The Power Within the Freedom of Choice. And if you've been listening to The Fen Den with your host, Sean Allen Fenn, and you're following me on Instagram, at Sean Allen Fenn, and Twitter, maybe you're even following me on Facebook, my Facebook page, and I thank you. So... If you've been following me for a while, I'm writing a book. And I actually shared it a a couple episodes ago. It's not even done yet, but that's that's how fully transparent I am. And the mark of an artist is to be vulnerable. So I'm not afraid to show my process. Because... The process is where you find the 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 real nitty gritty. The process is where you find yourself. It's where you work it out. Where a, where a singer finds her voice, where an artist finds the way he wants to render a painting in pencil or in oil paint or charcoal how do you want to draw your picture it's the process of getting there because we always see the the successes that other people have and we see the end result and that's cool but then how do you get there Well, you have to get under the hood and look at the process. So this is the process. And you can pre-order my book. Get on the waiting list. Go to my website, seanellenfenn.com slash book. And get on the list for this book. Because the the episode where I read uh, some, some of this book, I have since revisited and really kind of I have to tell you that I'm onto something and this is how the process this is how just working out the process will allow you to discover like you know 
Maybe you don't even want to discover it. Some people don't want to know how ice cream is made. They just want to eat the ice cream. And that's fine. Okay? I get it. I love ice cream. But say, for those who do <laughs> want to know how it's done. Because they want to do something themselves. Okay? And that's the difference. Is the curious people, the doers, they want to know. The spectators, they might not want to know. They don't care. They just want to see it. You just want to be entertained. So, if you want, just want to be entertained, well, let me entertain you. But if you also want to come with me on the journey, here's what I discovered, and I, I narrowed it down to what my book is about. I mean, I mentioned just some loose things about it in that it is part autobiography, uh, part philosophy. But the, the real thing is the question that I'm answering is will Sean ever find something people want and do it better. Will I ever find that thing that people want? And then do it better than anyone else. Will I ever find that? And what led to that question is acknowledging the deep motivation. So there I was. I set off to be a rock star. Why I wanted to be a rock star is because I wanted self-importance. I wanted self-importance. I wanted to feel important. Now, the difference is that I wanted something for selfish means. Okay, or, or the, it was selfish, and it was emptiness. Anytime you're, you, what you want is selfish in that way, it's going to be empty. Because what it really wanted was significance, and I wanted to give that to the world. Okay, I wanted to give significant. I wanted to be significant so I could give something to the world. But I was not willing to give more than I was taking. In the need for significance, I was only making this self-aggrandizement that was perpetuating ego. And instead of ego, what is be what I think is better and how... I've come to understand it is selfless confidence. Does that make sense? Okay, it's more than self-confidence. It's selfless confidence. And the only way I was able to get there was a total breakdown of myself. Okay, so my internal dilemma is how can I become significant to the world? And the only way we can do that is to make order out of chaos. And the way to make order out of chaos is it depends on who you are and what your purpose is. And you can't do it alone. You can only change the world with a network of people who also want to change the world. There is a really cool new discovery 
that scientists discovered a new human organ. Isn't that crazy? Just when we thought we, we knew exactly how many organs the human body has, no more, no less, scientists discover a whole new organ. It's insane. It's like discovering a new planet. And the cool thing about it is, is this organ is actually a network. It's a network of the of space spaces in between all of your other tissue. It's so weird. And it explains, it could explain uh, a lot of unknown things that we didn't know before. Every new discovery leads to a newer discovery after that. And it might explain how acupuncture works. Because I've never done acupuncture, but I've seen it done. And I know that those little needles, I mean, I haven't seen it done. <laughs> I've seen it in movies or pictures. You know, I, I should really try acupuncture sometime. Have you ever tried acupuncture? Let me know. I'll send me a tweet about it or an Instagram message. Direct message me. Yeah, so all those little needles they do with, when you go to acupuncturist and get you, you get your axe punctured, they stick those little needles in all those places. Well, it's possible that this newly discovered organ that the doctors are calling an organ that's spread out through our, our body, that is called an interstitium, and it's spread out through our body, and it's spaces, it's a network of these spaces filled with fluid in between all of our, all of our tissue throughout our whole body. And it can, it can explain a couple of things. And number one, it can explain how acupuncture works. So it can explain how alternative healing could be possible because it affects the interstitium. And if the acupuncture needles like stimulate the, these, these places, these interstitial places, maybe... I don't know, it's beyond me. But also it explains how cancer spreads. So, as usual, I, I wanna ask you something, um, how, you, how this relates to understanding the world around us. Okay, because that's one, that's one of the reasons why I make this podcast is to explain the world to discover why things are the way they are and, and what we should do to make the world a better place to literally make heaven on earth can we do that are you with me so I want to ask you what is the undiscovered space in between your actions and your thoughts, your desires, your motivations, what is that interstitial space? I mean, just as the heart refers to love and the brain refers to the mind, the organs that make us work that are the parts of our body that are well designed and all play a significant role in our health they also can symbolize and be a metaphor for like the heart is love 
the interstitial. It doesn't sound as romantic. But what is your metaphorical interstitial fluid? Okay. What can you tap into that either spreads dis-ease in your life or heals you? Because I feel that there is a place in your mind that is making sense of everything and is at the root of your, uh, the way that the, the world appears to you. It's at the root of your circumstances. It's literally, well, maybe not literally, but it can be thought of as the negative space. The negative space is a powerful, plays a huge powerful role in creating context for everything else. So what are the elements of good composition when you see it? If you're looking at a painting, a drawing, or architecture, or even a story, it's what's not said, or even a, a song or a melody. It's what is left out that is just as important as what's left in. And this negative space, this interstitial space, that is the in-between of everything else, we tend to ignore it. Right? We tend to ignore the in-between moments. Why is that? When people say they're killing time, yeah, why does that bother me so much? One of my, it's kind of one of my biggest pet peeves is when people say they're, they're, they're just killing time. Hey, you just want to kill some time. They're just shopping to kill time. And the reason I hate that, that term or, or that, the, the reason that bothers me is because it's an in-between moment. It's an interstitial moment that is taken for granted and taken lightly. And I'm not saying that it's wrong to enjoy yourself because that's not it. You absolutely should enjoy every moment, enjoy yourself. And there's a time to relax. There's certainly a time to relax. I just, uh, I'm just concerned when we ignore these moments in between other moments. Because inevitably we're going to miss something. We're going to miss an opportunity to do something that can alter the course of our lives if we're paying attention. It can heal us or it can cause dis-ease in our lives. And so what is that in-between moment? Even now, as you're listening, what else is going on around you? I mean, look around and pay attention to the things that no one else is noticing. And what are you seeing that no one else is seeing? Because the ability to do that will give you the power to affect people's lives in a way that no one else can. When you can see the in-between, when you can see the negative space, and you are able to recognize how, how powerfully it affects everything else on a macro level, um, have you heard of dark matter? There is dark matter in the universe. And the, the term dark matter is probably not the best way to name it because really no one knows what it is. 
and it's it's not literally dark or black it's just kind of this negative space and in reality that negative space takes up most of the the universe so on a micro level this negative space in our bodies is responsible for the either the healing or the dis-ease of our lives, of our physicality, and the negative space of our actions and our thoughts and our motivations, you could say it's our subconscious or our unconscious mind, which has, which implies, at least to me, I don't know if you see it this way, but when Sigmund Freud would talk about the the subconscious mind. It, it could be explained as an iceberg, and the ice the only the tip of the iceberg is what you're seeing from someone's personality, and from your actions and from the things that are visible. Those are only the tip of the iceberg, but below that iceberg, it is really more than the iceberg itself. And it's responsible for a a tremendous amount, I don't know, you could say like 80% of, of reality. And I think to be aware of that will help you to be more effective and insightful and in tune and that's what will create fulfillment in your life is being able to focus on the on not focus on the negative in terms of personality but the negative space is actually something that should not be ignored. And that is what my book is about, which you can go and, uh, to my website, seanellenfenn.com slash book and, and sign up for the waiting list because The importance of that negative space is so great in magnitude that it can explain the meaning of life. And I know it takes some audacity to think that I know the meaning of life. And I'm not saying that I do, because it's completely subjective. And no one can tell you what your meaning is, can they? That's something you have to work out for yourself. However, just as that man in the Rite Aid had the, happened to have the right tool on him to help me find out what I needed, what I'm giving you is a tool to find out what you need to know your purpose and to know your direction in in life. And while those are really um, brave claims, I know, but I really believe that. And so let me explain why the negative space matters in knowing your purpose. And this is the concept that I'm that I'm communicating in my book that I'm writing is that when we're born we don't have any recollection of previous before we were born with rare exception leaving out stories of past life regression 
but for most of us, we we have no recollection of life before being a child on this on this earth. Yet, while we're here, there are ideas and religious, um, you know, religious messages that will that will tell us that we know where we're going after. And this isn't about heaven or hell. It's about the in-between. It's, and it's not about purgatory. It's about the actions we take in the here and now. Okay? So it's as if we're in our, our lives are in this place where we show up in this in this existence in this kind of I don't know like a, a let's just say this reality that we are currently living in and we're led to believe that this is all there is and this is it and this is the reality okay but you could also think of it that there is that it's an opportunity. Another word just is is a challenge. That's why, of course, we have so many challenges in life, and you could say it's a test. Who is giving us this test? Well, that it is a another. Great question, because for um, for any sort of like religious tradition, it can it can take on different words, it can use different terminologies. But I think it's safe to say that life itself keeps living. Does that make sense? So consciousness itself, life itself, because before you're on this planet, there already is life on this planet. And after you die, there will continue to be life. You can hear the sirens outside. Here I am in New York City. And there's always action. There's constant, nonstop action. This is a, a world, a reality of action constantly just moving and living and and then in the cycle there's also dying and death but there continues to be life and that doesn't change you know our perception might blink in and out because we're here for a blink of an eye on this planet And so that's why what we do matters so much while we're here. Because if we fail the test, we will be forgotten. If we fail the test, we... Not that we're going to be punished, because again, this isn't like a religious thing to where like there's a heaven and hell and like this reward and punishment. Although in this life that we live in, there actually is a reward and punishment, but it's but it's very rarely like finalized. I mean, except for a death row criminal. For most of us, we always have another chance. So we can always retake our tests while we're here, but our whole life is a test that we can't retake. And whether we're reincarnated or not, I don't know. Who knows? But the fact remains is that while we're here, this is what we know. And as they say, you should 
you should write about what you know. Okay? So, we're given this understanding, or we have this concept of freedom of choice. Now, I've heard people argue that freedom of choice doesn't exist. And while I think that is possible, it's too black or white of an answer. Because again, you have to think of like the meta question. Freedom from what? Freedom of choice from what? Freedom to choose what? What's the opposite of freedom to choice? Okay, no freedom of choice. It gives us what? If you have no choice, you still have a choice. I know, it's kind of like a, a paradox. It's like a, a Russian doll with knowledge wrapped inside knowledge. And that's what I think that's what I think this is, that we're we're here on this in this existence as as we're given this opportunity to perform. The whole world is a stage. And when you think of it that way, it's really uh we have a really good deal. I mean, this is awesome. We can do anything with our lives. And that, on the other hand, is a problem. What do you do? You have this paradox of choice. Too many choices. Okay, well... You, the successful people throughout history basically just do one thing. And they do one thing really well. And... And I like that, and, and that's what I'm shooting for. And that one thing, though, it is so important to, to choose what that one thing is. You don't want to choose that wrong. Um, I'm going to wind down this episode of The Fend In, uh, and maybe I'll, I'll tell you next time, you can read it in the book, but another way to explain it is I'll tell you about the the other way to explain it. Another story is that it's like we're like we wake up in a room and we have no recollection of the day before, and we're in this dark room, and that's all we know and All of a sudden, in this darkness, light appears, and it appears through a window. And the light comes through the window and fills up the room. And now we have reason to believe that there's more than just this room. Because we, we have no recollection of the day before, of being here, of how we got there. We just know we woke up in this place. And so the light comes in. And now, we think there might be more to life than what meets the eye. And then, the phone rings. Okay, I'll tell you more about that next time. Who's on the other end? This has been probably the most interesting episode of The Fenden. So far, I think next week will be even better, though. And uh, I think I should bring on a guest. So uh, stay tuned. We're going to bring on a good guest. And uh, so you don't have to listen to me ramble the whole time. Thank you for listening. I'm so glad I could do this for you. Be amazing. Thank you for being awesome. This has been The Fenden. Go ahead and click like and subscribe. All right, catch you next time.